Good morning and welcome to this video on the making of my homemade DCF tent. This is part two and in this video I'll cover how I actually constructed the tent. I'll give you the material list and also show my patterns if you want to have a go at doing it yourself. I went ahead and cut out the tent roof in the DCF material allowing a two centimeter seam allowance on each side. So the first thing I need to do is I need to sew on uh, the rings for my self supporting and this will also help me just in the setup to have a guy line to go off because the actual guy line will be um, lower down on the angle um, and the reason for that is it lets you pull down on the poles keeping them more secure. Now I'm actually going to do a little bit of reinforcing um, where the sewing's going um, so I'm going to put a bit of material on the top and the bottom just to add a little bit of extra strength and then it will also have the um, seam seal tape over top which will make it even stronger now there is a uh, I've got a seam allowance I've got 2.5 uh, centimeters or 25 mil seam allowance uh, so the rings are going to go one sort of 10 mil back from the seam allowance um, and that'll keep it out of the way when I actually sew the sides on um, but still keeps it at the top where it needs. Now the load for this uh, is going to be an upwards load so I'm doing going to do a, uh, a box and then cross stitch across the box. And now I'm going to use GCF repair tape uh, to, uh, it both does waterproofing and reinforcing as well. Thing, do not use your sharp scissors when cutting uh, this tape because it gets a sticky residue on it and then you won't have sharp scissors anymore. So I always use a different pair. That's for the front. Um, so I'm going to put one at the, underneath it and then the other two across the top. And you always want a good overlap uh, when you're doing this uh, uh, DCF seaming tape. Okay, so that's the outside now done. And just the inside. So that is now ready to go. And the way these work is the, uh, the poles just fit into the little ring at the end. And then you've got your, your two rings. And that's how they work, like that. By um, pinching the top there, it uh, causes it to stay out. Um, from the string. This length here I've done it so if it's up here um, it fits perfectly and then when it comes down it's uh, sticking out so I should be able to get air going up in there. Now I clipped the insect mesh um, across the doorway and cut it to size. I use what are called the New Zealand quilting clips and I use these instead of pins when I do any hemming um, and they just make it really easy to work with this material and I don't have to worry about extra holes going into my fabric with pins. So now I'm putting the zip on so first thing I need to do is measure the bathtub floor because that's where the zip will start from. Then it is 75 centimeters across. And 63 centimeters high. 
And these measurements are off my old tent. So I'm just going to keep it at 63 for a little bit. And now I'm going to slowly start um, expanding it. using chalk and what it does is it's also uh, gone through to the half that's uh, behind this top layer so it means it's going to be perfectly symmetrical and now I need to pin the zip in place for when I sew it and I'm leaving a little bit of extra at the bottom there Put the zip face down against the material and pin it in place following the chalk line. Then sew on both sides of the zip so it's firmly attached to the insect mesh. And then you're ready for the next stage where you cut the mesh in the middle of the zip. Once you've cut down cut the mesh down the middle of the zip then you fold the mesh over and sew it again so that there is no chance of the mesh fraying. Now break the zip open and attach the zip puller. This can be quite fiddly and it does need a a little bit of practice until you can get it and then your zip is on, slide it up. I needed to make four pole sleeves, two for the little foot poles and two for my main poles. I sewed a bright piece of nylon around the top to make it easy to see where the pole goes in and then I sewed the sleeves together. This sleeve is for the smaller foot poles and this sleeve is now for my main trekking pole to hold up my tent. I'm using my hiking pole to make sure I get the right size for the sleeve. I use a flat fell seam for all of my joins um, because it makes sure that there's no edges showing so that they can't um, fray. Uh, I suggest look it up on Google on, on how to do the seam and practice with other material before you try it out. I have sewn. All right, this is the, uh, the the top. This is the middle. This is where my trekking pole will go in, and the guy line. Um, and then I've got the uh, insect mesh, and then the uh, front uh, flaps. So. I've sewn it, uh, the front flap stops 15 centimeters uh, because it's going to go across to allow the air vent um, and the um, insect mesh doesn't go all the way um, because it, it stops at the, uh, this is the end where the, the, my feet go. Um, and they're going to go across, not quite all the way to the end, because I uh, I didn't like that on my old tent, that the mesh was actually all the way down there, and I found it, it got wet and water came in a little bit. So it's a bit more um, offset. So I've just sewn it, um, and now I am going to fold over and over again, and then sew it so it's nice and secure. 
um, only up to this 15 centimeter mark um, because I'm going to have the uh, vent top going across here as well so this is just bit by bit experimenting um, I'm not sure if this is the best way to do it but it's the way I'm trying I have now finished sewing the uh, sides so what I've done is I've sewn the uh, insect mesh um, and the uh, door flaps um, also the tricking pole holder and the uh, clip for the guy line um, and that's what it looks like finished not actually overly happy with how I did that so uh, the next one I'll do it slightly differently um, yeah and there's uh, the zip on my door and um, I'll connect the floor to it later um, and now I am seeing where the vent um, goes so I just need to attach um, these so that my doors have got a, a crossover um, and see where it ends up to to make sure that these actually join and they do um, and then I need to put the vent across I've now put the, the vent on um, and it sits really good uh, airflow going up there um, and I'll have a piece of string attached so either I can pull it up and get full airflow or in a storm I can pull it down and close off the vent but uh, that's sitting really nicely with that uh, thin bit of plastic I used I used a, a flexible chopping board for that. I can reach in here just to adjust the tension of the guy line. Um, so yeah, happy with that. That looks good. So now I can sew this and then do the same with the other side. To finish the doors I folded over the edges and then sewed it down to stop fraying and give it more strength. I attach the door closure loops and I stuck on some DCF reinforcing on all of the corners to give it extra strength in high winds. Then I finished sewing the vent to the rest of the tent. Unfortunately, I missed capturing the last parts on camera. Um, basically what happened is I sewed the corners of the floor to make the bathtub part of it stand upright. I then used my quilting clips to attach the insect mesh to the floor and then I sewed that using a flat fell seam. The final stage was finishing where I put DCF tape on all of the seams for waterproofing, reinforced all of the corners and attached the guy lines. Here's a summary of the finished tent and all of the measurements for the tent. This is the list of all the materials I used to make my tent. All the prices are in US dollars. The amounts will probably need someone with some good math skills to check because trying to calculate the area of irregular shapes is not easy. Um, but as you can see the total price, the total price is $415 which is $134 cheaper than any of the commercially available tents. 
And these are the patterns and measurements I used to try and get the most efficiency out of the material because it's not cheap material. That's the end of this video. Thank you for joining me on this journey of making a tent for the first time. I hope you enjoyed it and I know I enjoyed using my tent and I am about to restart my North Island Rangers Traverse so I'll be trying out the tent a little bit more in the next month.